Hello everyone, this is Steven from the Even Steven channel, and today we're going to talk about how does a revolver work? How does it work? How does it work? Now, a year or two ago, I did a video entitled, How Does a Semi-Automatic Pistol Work? And I rewatched it, and it was fine, it was like 20 minutes long, could have been shorter. Um, but I thought factually the information it was fine, but no one really watched it. Got like has like 100 views on YouTube right now, which is fine. I don't make videos just for views. I make it because I, I want to make it. I think it's, I want to make things that I want to make. And if it happens to be what you want to watch, you have to watch it. Um, so I kind of forgot about the video. But recently, someone in Belgium commented about how they live in a country where firearms aren't, ex is, aren't as accessible to them. And he appreciated me making the video. So I thought, let's do revolvers. Revolvers are kind of a niche thing. I'm kind of a niche guy. Revolvers are maybe not quite as well known as semi-automatic semi -automatic pistols. So I'm like, all right, let's do revolvers. Let's do it. So we got two revolvers here. Now, fortunately, unfortunately, I have my Smith & Wesson 627, 625. Both great guns. I like them both. This is an eight-shot 357 Magnum revolver from Smith & Wesson. Eight shots of a 357 Magnum, which is no small feat. Uh, six, Smith & Wesson 627 Pro Series, for what it's worth. That's the full name. And I have my 625... Smith & Wesson 625 JM. Ooh, that's so smooth. Look at that. Look at that! So smooth. Uh, which is a six-shot 45 ACP revolver. Little known fact, or lesser known fact, um, the United States military used 45 ACP revolvers in both World War One and World War Two. Little we'll side note there. The United States has a very long history of using 45 ACP revolvers. So fortunately, I have both these guns. I like them. They're cool. I like them. They're nice. Uh, unfortunately, they're very similar. They're basically the same gun, or very similar gun, just in different calibers. If I was going to do a video like this, I would like to have something like a Colt single action army reproduction or a Schofield revolver which you know uh, but typically if you're gonna see a revolver 95 percent of the time it's gonna be like this with a swing out cylinder and we'll talk a little bit about more of that later 90-95 percent of the time you're gonna see something like this so moving on uh, where do we start? Let's start with cartridges um, that's what I did with my last video. I'm going to start with cartridges. This is a 38 special cartridge. Side note, a little side note. There's always side notes. I can go on side notes for an hour. Uh, this is a 357 Magnum revolver. And a 357 Magnum is the more powerful version of 38 special. So if you have a 38, uh, if you have a 357, very, make sure I get this right. If you have a 357 Magnum revolver, you can shoot 38 Special, which tends to be a little weaker, a little easier to control, easier to shoot, and tends to be a little cheaper, so keep that in mind. But now we have 38 Special. So this is a complete cartridge. We have the actual bullet, this the projectile, the bullet right here, that's the bullet on top. People say, I'm going to put bullets in my magazine, or bullets in my revolver. This is the actual tactical bullet, which is separate from other things. The casing this big piece of brass right here kind of holds everything together the primer which is kind of like the ignition the firing pin is going to hit that it's going to set off as a little spark and the spark is going to cause the gunpowder inside this casing to burn and cause a rapid increase in pressure that rapid increase in pressure is going to force the bullet down the barrel it's going to engage the rifle and give a little spin it's going to come out so that's a cartridge, one complete cartridge of ammunition. Uh, by the way, uh, 45 ACP, very similar. Um, similar in general construction. You have the bullet here, casing here, primer there, uh, gunpowder inside. Although you can see how they're they're differently shaped, but it's still the same basic idea. Now let's just. Uh, Go over some of the parts of a revolver. We have the grip. You grip the grip. That's pretty self-explanatory. The hammer. 
just just double check these are unloaded nice little safety check make sure we go okay yeah you have the hammer cylinder release release the cylinder trigger guard trigger cylinder this is kind of the extractor or the extractor star right here it's typically called the ejector rod are these names all that important mm, not really this kind of piece right here in general is typically called the crane you have the front sight uh, sorry rear sight front sight you have the barrel here it's typically called the forcing cone uh, I think that's generally going to do all the major parts of a revolver. If you look at it, diagrams, you're going to have all different kind of components shown on there. But I'm trying to like make it too complicated. And similarly, that all, all almost every single part is going to be duplicated on this revolver. So we've got the grip, cylinder release, hammer, cylinder. Only, only six cartridges go in here as opposed to eight. I'm trying to remember if each individual one is called the chamber. I'm trying to get that revolver nomenclature correct. I think each one is called the chamber. Uh, extractor star, extractor, extractor star, ejector, crane, rear sight, front sight. Notice that the barrels are contoured a little bit differently. The front sights are a little bit different, but you see there's, these are very similar guns. So now let's see, how does a revolver work? Well, I got a cartridge here. This is a dummy cartridge, a 38 special. And if I was going to use the revolver, use the revolver, I'm going to hit the cylinder release. That allows me to, if I don't do anything, I can't open this up. Hit the cylinder release. That lets me to swing the cylinder out. And I can put in zero, one to eight cartridges in here. It doesn't really matter what order I put them in. I could just do like one, skip one, one, skip one. So you can, typically you're gonna fill the whole thing up, but you don't have to. And you can close it. You can basically close it wherever you want. Now these revolvers are both double action or single action. And what does that mean? Well, it means I could do double action. And double action, double action means that the pulling of the trigger does two actions. It cocks the hammer, and it releases the hammer. So those are the two actions. And there's more stuff going on, but that's the general nomenclature. Double action, or single action. And single action means that the hammer, sorry, the trigger, is simply releasing the hammer. That's what single action means. And the single action is eh, pretty good on this gun. Not quite as good as this gun. The double action is a little smoother and the single action is a little lighter. And in both situations, you have a firing pin right, let's see if I can show this correctly. You can just barely see it poking out. I don't think this is how it's supposed to be, but you can kind of get the idea. The hammer comes forward, hits here, creates kind of a linkage. The hammer, you know, the firing pin isn't directly mounted on this hammer. It kind of hits this, this hits that little recess there, and the firing pin kind of pops out a little bit and hits the primer. Again, double action or single action. And for the people who don't know, just very quickly, again, I'm going with the assumption that someone who simply hasn't held a firearm before or shot a firearm before, you're going to have to use your sights. And you have the rear sights here and the front sight there. And you're going to line them up. You're going to try to make them as even this way and as even that way as possible. And you're going to put whatever your target is. Generally, you're going to put it right on top of your front and rear sight. Now, if your sights are off and it's shooting slightly le up, down, left, and right, which is possible, these aren't lasers. We're shooting chunks of metal. 
it's possible that the gun could be shooting up, down, sl slightly up, down, left, or right. You can, you can adjust it. You can adjust it this way to go up and down, the sights up and down. You can adjust it this way for the sights to go left and right. And you can kind of dial it into where it needs to be to be a little more accurate and a little more, a little more precise. Now, what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to like take the gun apart to show you. Like, I'm not going to take these screws out and take the gun apart to show you how it works. I, I just don't feel I have the mechanical expertise to really talk about that. But we can talk a little bit about more about how the gun works. Now down here you can see what is typically referred to as the cylinder stop. And over here, which is unfortunately well I fell out, harder to see, there's kind of a hand. And that is just hard to show. Because when the cylinder is open and closed and when you're using it, um, you typically can't see this. See how good we can get in here. I don't even think I show it well on camera. You can kind of just barely see it on the bottom of that little, little slot right there. But that's the hand. And the idea is the hand literally just kind of comes up and goes like this. It's really just pushing the cylinder. See I have these little grooves here. It's kind of just pushing up, pushing up and causing the cylinder to rotate. So as the gun is firing, you see that, can I show up one? I'm trying to get good lighting to show this. This is why these videos take so long. You can see the cylinder stop right there. And as I pull the trigger, look at that. Cylinder stop went away. Now as I keep going, the hand is turning the cylinder. That's the hand turning the cylinder there. And again, unfortunately, it's just very difficult to show. And as you keep going, eventually the cylinder stop comes back up. So the cylinder stop goes down, the hand starts to rotate. Good thing this wasn't loaded. Um, the cylinder stop goes down, the hand starts to rotate. And the cylinder stop comes back up. You can see how it kind of like, how it kind of has this little groove to make it easier to snap in place. Like I said, at that point, the hammer flies forward, the gun fires. And if the people don't know, uh, you know, you put, oh, um, let me use these. So this is a little bit out of the scope of this video, but these are clips. And there are several ways you can try to load a revolver more quickly because, you know, just putting them in one at a time is kind of slow. But um, you can do something like this, or there's other devices you can use to load the guns quicker. Again, you can throw in a whole clip, truly a clip, clip, um, just a, a piece of sheet metal, really, that holds these all together. Put a clip in, close it up, fire eight times. You can do single action, do double action. I prefer to shoot in double action because um, if I'm shooting competition, that's why I do it. You open it up, hit the ejector, and they'll all come out. Now, if you also had loaded them one at a time, one, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and do the same thing when you fire them all, open them up. They would all fall out and go everywhere. Both the 627 here, Smith & Wesson 627, can use clips. And both the 625 can use clips. Uh, much more useful in the 625 because um, the 45 ACB cartridge doesn't have a rim the way 38 Special does. So when you actually hit this and there's no um, clip in there, the, the cartridges don't really do anything. Uh, I'm trying to avoid putting live cartridges into the revolver, but if you can see it right here, this is a live cartridge, you can be very careful. Um, the extract doesn't hit anything. 
However, when you use the clips, truly clips, um, the extractor hits the clip. So, um, yeah, both the 627 and the 625 are both um, designed to use clips. Um, not every revolver is. You know, not every one, not every revolver does. And, but this one has more obvious than this one. You can see how it's kind of cut like a recess here it's cut to allow the clips to line everything up properly and I think that's pretty much it what else there's to talk about yeah, because it is a revolver that when you actually go to fire the gun when the hammer finally slings forward Nothing's really moving. You know, the firing, the hammer's gonna hit the firing pin, the firing pin's gonna set off the primer, that sequence I'm gonna talk about, the powder's gonna burn, the bullet's gonna go through, the gun's gonna recoil. You know, and they'll have a nice good. Uh, these guns are so big, the 625, 6% are so big, you really don't have to worry about where your hand is. You, know, you do have to be concerned that gas is gonna come out of here because it's, it's a pretty tight fit. You can see the cylinder and the forcing cone. It's pretty close. It's almost perfect. However, it's not. And a little bit of gas is going to come out of there. The, 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 there's a little gap, a very small gap in between the cylinder and the forcing cone, and some gas is going to come out. Unfortunately, these guns are so big, personally, these guns are so big, that um, my hand really doesn't have much of a chance to go here. On very small revolvers, if you put your hand like this, your thumb's going to be more like here. And that's dangerous. So that's a good point to talk about when using revolvers. You got to keep your hand away from here. Uh, things like the Chiapa Rhino, which is a weird thing. It's like the stuff upside down, almost. Um, even more so because the barrel's on the bottom. So Chiapa Rhino, if you get one of those, be even more careful. Chiapa, C H I A P P A, and then Rhino. But that's one of the reasons I like these guns so much. They're so big. These are called N-frame Smith and Wesson revolvers. They're so big. But you can just hold them like a regular pistol pistol technique. You don't have to worry about your thumbs being too far forward. But I think it's just about going to do it. I don't think I have much to add to that. You know, revolvers are uh, an interest of mine. I like revolvers. I think they're cool. It's a little different. A little bit. Mm, I would say, yeah, it's a little different. I enjoy it. But like I said, you know, you have the cylinder. You put the cartridges in there. Um, you really can't, just in case someone was thinking, you really can't take the cylinders off very easily. Um, it can be done. You can take the cylinder off by taking out this screw and you can take it apart. But however, like quick change cylinders, that's not really a thing. That comes up in video games sometimes. Um, there's like one gun that does that, kind of. It's a black powder gun. You know, this For modern smokeless revolvers, you're not doing that. But you know, let's let's end it there. I think that was a pretty good that was a pretty good run. Um, yeah, revolvers are in a, in a way different, but I think simpler. I don't think I'm doing that right. Some things are simpler, some things are more complicated. Uh, but I enjoy revolvers. I'm a big revolver fan. And I think this video has run its course. So this is Steven from the Even Steven channel. Please do all that like, share, and subscribe. And if you have any questions, which there might be a few, leave them in the comments, and I will see you next time. Thank you and goodbye.